Всем привет. Good morning, everybody. Uh, who didn't believe that container are great? Evil Pavel will prove you that that pro just believe. Trust the container developer. He'll tell you that container that they are very bad. We'll start the second day from containers. This is a very popular topic recently. Uh, almost the buzz topic at the conferences. There are some conferences dedicated conta to containers specifically. There are some traditions evolving along the way, like a good presentation about the container should contain the picture of container. So I decided to carry through with this uh, tradition. This is container. That's what I found in Google. There are lots of uh, images of containers. Yandex uh, shows more containers if you search. That's so much for the tradition because the tr uh, containers in the IT conference are slightly different. In Wikipedia, you can find uh, containers as the data, as format, web container, graphic container, but it's not about it anyway. The only article describing our container is in Wikipedia and it maintains that containers are a system of lightweight virtualization and uh, some examples are provided like Solaris Zone, uh, based the jails, uh, OpenZ and Virtuos, and Alexi Docker and uh, Coros, which evolved recently. And a while ago, most of people were uh, called that technology containers, the technology which uh, was based on two concepts, on two pillars. First was called C groups, control groups, the other one uh, namespaces. First technology, it's a kernel subsystem uh, to unite processes into groups and to uh, tag some controllers to those groups so that administrator will identify the way those processes groups will consume system resources, uh, input, output, memory, network, throughput, capacity, and so on. Another subsystem uh, or namespace was the system of virtualization, which enabled us to unite the processes in the groups so that the groups of processes could uh, own a similar identifier, see different groups, different objects, like one process on identifier network device called back, sees one network device, the other one sees the other one, the other device. As to the container object, uh, it was n not there in the container, in the kernel. Containers were the technologies uh, taking those parts of those two pillars and uh, just uh, con uh, having uh, them mixed up to launch processes. The third pillar was not there, but it evolved eventually. Many know what kind of pillar I'm talking about. It was Docker project, which added up to this technology of container virtualization. The missing part, the missing ability to take a set of software bundles, uh, package it, and launch it in the container. Because prior to Docker, container technology uh, was confined to kernel subsystems and a very little and limited set of uh, utilities, system utilities, which uh, enabled us to put together those building blocks. Uh, when Docker's Docker came along, it became very easy to take uh, software pieces to package them and to launch them inside the containers. Then the third pillar was growing with time and it outstripped the other two. It overshadowed them, so to put it. And currently, when we say container, it's slightly about different technology, which is related to the first one. It grew out of it, but it's just different. Uh, today, we call a container the way of packaging apps with all their dependencies and to launch them in the isolated uh, sandbox. Um, now, currently, they launch applications into the containers, first in the former sense, but the situation has been changing and shifting towards the latter sense of the container. I would like to tell you about those two worlds. The first one, 
calls, containers, the low-level virtualization technology, uh, like in Open uh, Galaxy and others. Look, um, kernel developers are also writing something into the kernel about it. And the second world, the second community, which is uh, um, upper on the software stack, it's the guys who are engaging containers like apps, uh, administration, and management. Second, uh, a definition is more popular. Let's start from it. What is going on in the community of people who called containers the packaged uh, applications? First of all, it's about the growth of popularity or the concept of uh, complex system construction as microservices. Docker initially has been gearing in its technology for those guys who would like to come up with very sophisticated and big system. They'll not do it in the way of a big monolith. A monolithic application with very sophisticated logic inside, but will uh, put them together with small components. Each one interacts with a set of other components and it does not store inside it from within the state which would be cr critical. Each of the microservices in Docker philosophy is the component which in any point of time could be killed and relaunched from a scratch. And the system with some delay will uh, keep on operating. Such an approach towards designing big and sophisticated systems has been proactively promoted in different conferences, not just on Docker company, but also by others. Uh, this technology has got lots of adherents uh, and of course those who are against. Those who are against, they say microservice is cool, it's great to design a software is just cool but we tried and it was even worse than before. No, we'll stay away from containers. Second uh, implication related to it is about Docker saying that with the appearance of the software, they uh, combined uh, uh, pretty detached isolated groups of developers and system administrators who were totally detached and aloof from each other. And now they understand each other much better. Docker is seeing now a developer uh, writes uh, his app. Uh, Docker recently announced Docker for Mac. Now it's possible to write the application not just on Linux. Not everybody likes Linux, by the way. And a developer wrote the application, packaged it, uh, passed it over to admin, and the developer may go to Bahamas, drink cocktails, and sun basking, something like that. But was the only thing that uh, the admins come along later on, they say it's cool, they give us this app, but all the issues were hard to sort out with those applications. Uh, I like to put together a complex system out of several ones to set network, uh, to identify services, to connect storages. Uh, monitoring of the services and most interesting part of that, updating and upgrading in due time. Uh, that is the backlog of a problem which is still there. They are quite right, but uh, uh, so dockers are aware of those problems and those challenges encountered by the admins. Docker team tries to resolve it, supporting differently the projects which grow around the docker, which in part explains uh, uh, this issue, why the ecosystem developed so rapidly around this project and projects adjacent to Docker, resolving those problems are uh, plentiful. And another implication of containers as uh, applications, it appeared quite unexpectedly for Docker company. Next to them, another project called Coros started growing. Initially, they were going to set up operational system to launch Docker containers. They didn't want to make their own containers. They were quite happy with uh, 
Docker's technology to be launched on their own. Uh, and then there were some contradictions and controversies between uh, them and within Chorus Project, another project rocket grew. Uh, it was the second alternative implementation of the same technology as the one offered by Docker. And in many ways, their way of packaging applications came out uh, more successful. Uh, so uh, Docker had two concurrent technologies, and Docker uh, suggested not to give rise to many other projects uh, because sometimes they would not be compatible in use in between themselves. And so, uh, and and Joe CI Open Containers Initiative uh, was set up. That was an NGO, sort of an NGO, non-commercial, not commer non-commercial, not-for-profit organization, open container initiative, OCI, which set up Docker and Rocket. Many other companies joined up. They were working on the standard for packaging and dissemination of the application, and they made that standard. But it came out as the standard, which uh, really encompasses the best from both Rocket and Docker, but it's not fully compatible with both. So now we have to deal with three standards at the end of the day, but Docker and Rocket yet have been gearing towards uh, supporting in their developments these uniform standards instead of developing their own. And in the second community whereby people refer to containers, uh, in the different way, something else has been happening. This is about three major requirements for virtualization technology. Everybody wants the virtual environment, which they launch to be a safe, uh, robust, uh, fastly working, and resilient and flexible, so you can launch software without any limitations or challenges. And it turns out that the uh, container virtualization technologies, hypervisors, are in different uh, places of this flow chart. Hypervisors, from the perspective of the community dealing with uh, security and safety, they are way more safe and secure than virtual you know, containerizations. Uh, it's about the fact that if software which is sitting in a virtual machine uh, breaks the kernel of the virtual machine, only this virtual machine uh, is broken. The host remains untouched so that wrongdoer uh, will have to break hypervisor. But it's a very small code set, very narrow interface, so it's uh, much more difficult to break it because it's much less vulnerable because it's tiny. And we uh, provide for maximum flexibility Flexibility for launched applications inside because within hypervisor it's a Linux core, uh, so everything the app wants it will get from here. As to the container virtualization, the flexibility and security requirements are a bit contradictory. If we are going to allow the application to use all the core uh, capacity being in this uh, container. That means that we should have all the functionality for the kernel. The more functionality in the kernel, the more leeway and in search and the more vulnerable places and bottlenecks. Uh, so it's just uh, uh, a trade-off between not safe but flexible. Uh, to minimum set of requirements, which would be safe, not allowing the container to do anything extra from what it wants. But of course, it's possible to have it just like that, uh, flexible and safe, but that's very difficult, actually. But of course, the best would be some way here to have the virtual environment, which would be uh, safe, uh, rapid, and flexible as containers. When it comes to flexibility uh, and uh, the and uh, safety is very contradictory, so we should do something with a, a hypervisor to accelerate it to enhance it. Docker company 
which uh, launches uh, arbitrary software in their containers is, uh, by the same token, interested uh, for those containers. It offers to have all those three properties and supports uh, those developments in every way it can. Uh, it does some R&D uh, to uh, speed up QAM. There are three directions. It's clear containers from Intel, Unikernels. It's a set of projects. And uh, recently appeared one project, but it could be developed, which tries uh, to write proxy kernel. Uh, the kernels, it's a proxy. Let's start from uh, Linux, uh, clearing uh, a few words about it. What are those layers by Docker? Uh, Docker, in order to provide container, the root file system, the set of files uh, which represent the uh, software launching the container, it collects this file system out of layers. It has got a basic layer with basic Linux. Uh, for a long while, it was uh, Bounty. Now they are changing uh, Bounty for base uh, layer by a tiny Linux, then another layer uh, with some software for container, database, web base, web service, whatever, uh, then uh, some extra layers. They configure it, the application, install more connections, or whatever. At the end of the day, each container uh, unites all those layers uh, which are prescribed by the author of this container when he was writing this container. And uh, a very great accomplishment of this technology is the fact that if several containers have good uh, layers they share when the containers are launched. Uh, the data, the system starts reading from the disk and deploying in this cache memory. They are not duplicated. If one container uh, starts uh, using GOPC standard library in memory, does that reads that from the disk? It's in, di in the disk cache memory uh, cache. The first container works with that. Then second, third, and fourth container comes along. He needs GOPC as well. He takes the um, uh, pages out of that ca this uh, cache which were already read. There is no duplication, no transaction of uh, disk input-output. Uh, this design is possible when Docker container are launched uh, in the old containers in the virtual environment, that type of container. It became possible thanks to a special file system which is called Overlayfs. Uh, a while ago, a similar file system was called the UFS. It's a virtual final system, uh, file system in Linux uniting uh, files uh, from different subdirectories, trees from different subdirectories, and provides this uh, ability not to uh, duplicate input and output and memory content. But if you try to launch a similar container collected from the layers of virtual machine, uh, you won't be able to do it out of overlay of phase because uh, hypervisors are sitting there. It's drivers of those virtual devices. Until recent times, uh, they did make it possible to unite the uh, pages of this cache and to explain input-output system that if the data is read already, um, is viewed by one container, uh, there should not be a replication. In Intel, they are doing different things, uh, actually. Uh, but. What's interesting, what they figured out in Clear Containers Project in Intel, they suggested the way uh, to deal with those layers uh, out of which Docker collects container to put them inside KVM hypervisor so that uh, the shared parts of data out of those layers were only viewed once, uh, not to duplicate elements in this cache in memory. It's called DOCS technology uh, for KVMs uh, uh, such uh, 
long devices, a disk in the memory, and on top of that, we'll need a patch to file system, which would explain this patch system uh, that pa uh, to this file system that this is not a classical rotating uh, disk uh, to view and cache data, but it's in sitting in the memory. You can work with it without any extra actions to do that. In clear contain containers, vis-a-vis -vis the case when a Docker is launched in conventional KVM, the density of deployment of Docker, Docker containers is uh, similar as when uh, they, they are launched in container virtual environments. Next set of uh, projects is unikernels. I use the technology which is very convenient in comparison to something else. Contain uh, containers, uh, what is that? That is uh, common uh, hardware, common kernel, and then the stack of uh, application libraries in each container it is its own. And um, they also say that the AVM, uh, VM, virtual machine, is a bit thicker stack. It's a hardware kernel, virtual uh, hardware kernel working on virtual hardware. And then above that, the uh, library and applications. And those two additional layers is uh, what makes it slower in virtual machine compared to container uh, virtual uh, environments. And in order to have it faster, you need to do you need to do something with those two layers, make them thinner. And there are options for that already well known part of virtualization technology. Uh, the, in which uh, the kernel is explained that it operates in hypervisor. There is no virtual uh, hardware. You don't need to download uh, standard drivers. If you want to do something with network card, you call a hypervisor, and hypervisor would make it more efficient than contacting virtual hardware. Uh, Unikernel's technology um, moves a bit uh, further. Uh, also, um, rejecting a guest kernel, and not only the virtual uh, hardware. And we are ready to assemble our system under such a uh, structure. And we have to explain them to the system, to the components that it works in uh, high provision uh, assistance. That's an interesting technology. Uh, measurement of productivity, efficiency, um, bring it close container virtual environments and hypervision uh, environments uh, temporary uh, limitation uh, is that the library this library here has to be uh, prepared for each particular application that you want to launch in hypervision a uh, hypervisor uh, and uh, finally the last thing i wanted to mention is the so-called proxy kernels uh, recently announced at the conference, a, a project was announced in which uh, developers um, return the kernel back to virtual machine, but change that in such a way that part of functions uh, that the kernel carries out is done within the kernel, within the virtual machine, and part of the functions it carries out to process to the uh, kernel um, launch the host. And they analyzed the productivity, the efficiency, and uh, compared it with Linux uh, kernels. And uh, they found out that the many of those were found in the layers responsible for interaction with system uh, libraries, um, file systems, abstract layers, uh, socket uh, operation, and uh, memory access, and code responsible for TCP package processing, other parts of network uh, stack. Mm, and disk planner, file systems, uh, there they didn't find any uh, such limitations. And they separate parts of a kernel that were not sensitive. They were uh, can allowed to continue on the host side, uh, servicing all virtual machines. And those parts of a kernel that were subject to attacks and um, sensitivities, they mm, remain in high provision. Everything, everything um, makes a system in this way more resilient um, because only that virtual machine is down which is broken in the case of attack, not the whole system. And uh, beyond the container virtualization technology, because hypervisors move this way, uh, it looks like 
like uh, container utilization technology remains uh, smaller and smaller, but still there is some niche in which uh, hypervisors uh, do not play a dominant role. And uh, despite the, uh, the fact that the efficiency has uh, greatly increased recently with the help of uh, hardware designers and developers of soft, a um, number of tests shows that productivity program launch in container is 10 to 20 percent higher compared to hypervisor uh, running uh, program. And nobody can do so far anything about that, but there are different scenarios which show that even those 10 percent are um, sometimes valuable uh, advantage especially if uh, flexibility, flexibility of the system is not uh, really important and other factors are uh, more important and when you know what to expect of the system and simplest example is a set of services under this uh, NFV name, Network Function Utilization, the software which provides various network technologies. For example, uh, complex topologies, adjustment, uh, some smart firewall balancing um, models, uh, IP address management, and so on. All that soft uh, is sensitive to productivity. The slightest delay in delivery of package can lead to considerable uh, decrease in efficiency and the fact that what that soft wants from the kernel is easy to um, determine it's not that much a socket uh, access uh, some other services from the kernel not very complex and not very um, difficult to launch that uh, soft in container virtual environment providing that uh, only the functions that it needs um, looking at the success of those projects that I show that try to launch network services within container utilization component, uh, there is interest uh, rising to uh, launching other service uh, items uh, in the same mode. Uh, when they, you know the function, when you know that it can be launched within the environment quite fast and not mm, necessary to provide the high level of flexibility different services, systems providing program-defined, uh, software-defined storage uh, allocation. All uh, that soft is still uh, has a good chance to make use of container utilization to become more efficient. That is all from myself. If you have any questions, you are welcome. Okay, I have a question about hypervisor. Can you go back uh, in unikernel? Uh, why it is different from container virtualization? We also have kernel there. We also have separate libraries for each application. What is the difference here? The difference is is the same picture. In the container JLFC library is a general purpose, the simplest library. If something is needed from the library, open a file. It um, makes a system call, um, contacting a kernel, uh, and that kernel can be either in hypervision or not. And uh, in unikernel, it's a specialized library, not general library, and it contacts uh, hypervision with the request. Uh, to that kernel to open that uh, application in the file. That is uh, ideologically very, very tiny difference. Um, but here they fight a, for launching application under hypervision, uh, hypervisor control. Hypervisor, I didn't show here on the scheme, but it is there, hypervisor. Thank you for your presentation. I wanted to ask you first question is about how you see in a few years this container utilization, which way it will go. Uh, clear containers will catch up and even overcome, uh, overtake those. And second question, as far as I know, clear containers are used to, uh, 
with limited number of uh, devices is a limiting factor, processor, memory, and PCI uh, bus, maybe. Um, the second question is, are there plans, maybe you heard about, of uh, adding GPU uh, devices to such light uh, um, container systems? Well, going one by one, what will happen in container utilization? Uh, later, uh, well, currently container utilization is still used as light uh, weight systems. Uh, distribution, distributive is uh, launched in that. Um, this approach, I believe, would die out in a few mm, years, and uh, people would uh, uh, switch to KVM instead of light uh, containers, and um, the nature uh, to launch some services within that will still remain uh, until hypervisors will catch up with uh, speed, vel velocity. Um, as to taking over, I uh, doubt it very much uh, because there is a layer of hypervision. Even if uh, it's seen, it cannot be completely avoided. And they, what you can achieve is uh, no decrease in mm, efficiency, but to take o over. As to the second question, not only DAX technology was developed and many other things, and one of the things is to create VM with a smaller set of devices. That is all done at, for acceleration, uh, launch, acceleration. With two devices, you can do it in parts of second. And GPU uh, support addition, uh, these requests come from people that uh, do 3D graphs or high um, power computing, oh, then they have a highly mm, productive hardware and they want to have appropriate uh, capacity in software. GPU, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we, Intel would do that, that or any other party. GPU, uh, classical virtualization, yeah, in classical it works. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I uh, wanted to ask you, you spoke about containers, about hypervisor uh, development. What is the challenge uh, for virtual, virtual machines in the next few years? Uh, we work in uh, the same company. Well, challenge for uh, virtual uh, virtualization is uh, number one is that soft is bought currently to use containers as light virtual machines and first challenge is not to lose those clients with their desire to reduce uh, to uh, stop using containers and use hypervisor uh, they need more compatibility not only container utilization uh, or but uh, for hypervisor and second and this slide I show uh, either we do ourselves or uh, make friends with some companies uh, that would like to launch their service uh, software. And um, NFV companies are uh, priority here and provide them continuous transition as alternative to hypervision. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we speak about unikernels. Can we say that they deteriorate uh, safety considerably because API hypervisor is expanded? Is there, well, uh, security and not damaged uh, that much because they provide, Unikernel provides a minimum interface to the outside. Each Unikernel is assembled for application. If application makes a call which was not planned, which was not authorized, it would not happen. Um, they would not go outside the uh, um, hypervision. And, um, they also do some other simplification in management of uh, memory and privileges, uh, which as a result leads uh, to a situation that uh, dangerous calls uh, do not reach kernel. Uh, this is difficult to explain. Uh, easy to explain, and on the other hand, uh, difficult to explain. It's a general question I can, uh, answer I can give. Uh, Unikernel, you can uh, type in Google, and there uh, you'll see a list of projects related to that. Good day. You spoke about containers as virtual machines and containers as applications. 
did I understand correctly that container applications is also a virtual machine, but with the addition of IPI? Oh, uh, it is absolutely different. Well, not exactly. Container application is, uh, first of all, a way or a means. Uh, it's an advanced manager of packages. That is first. And for security reasons, when container application is launched, not created, but launched, actually, and it, they try to launch it with in an isolated environment. Historically, that was containers like uh, virtual machines. But in, uh, because they have problems with flexibility and security, uh, currently, container applications, uh, they try to launch under the management of hypervis hypervisor. And Docker, Docker now launches container virtual environment. And when then, in that environment, application. But there are projects which allow, instead of creating a container virtual uh, environment, to launch KVM or ZM, and then within that, uh, an application. But they are uh, slow, not very highly efficient. Pavel, can you answer a little bit about um, block uh, device? Uh, you mean this one? Blocked a device. Let us do, let us discuss it separately because it's not mm, directly linked to this topic. Sorry, if you don't mind. Uh, let us then thank uh, Pavel for his presentation, and please stay here.